Welcome back, my dear friends. Let's start our story today. If you are driving, have a safe one. If you are working or just chilling listening to my stories, don't forget to take some tea of coffee. Let's start. Kim and I met about 7 years ago and quickly became an item. We both came from a Midwest upbringing which was God-fearing Christians that placed only God above family. We loved going to church every Sunday and making plans for our future. I was a successful engineer with a promising future, and Kim sold accounting software for a large tech firm based in Atlanta. Before we were married, my mom and dad purchased a three-bedroom home for me after I graduated college. They had saved a great deal of money and wanted to share their own success with others while they are still alive. Most people pass their earthly possessions after their death, never getting to enjoy the happiness of the gifts they can give while they are alive. Mom and dad shared their blessing while still alive and enjoyed sharing the happiness. Kim and I were married a little over five years ago and have been on a perpetual honeymoon ever since. Our sex life was great and we made love at least four nights a week. We were soulmates and we made all of our friends sick by how close and loving we were to each other. We were blessed with two beautiful blonde hair identical twin girls and our lives changed for the better after their birth. We put all of our time into raising the girls and made sure they had a loving home. We had what others might consider a boring lifestyle. We ate at home most nights, went out on Friday and Saturday night, and church on Sunday. We were not into the social scene and fashions, like others our age. Kim wore conservative clothes at work and at home, and only allowed anything sexy, for my eyes only, in our bedroom. Our relationship was based on trust and full transparency. We never kept anything from each other which made for a solid foundation of our marriage. Kim was one of those women that needed to show her affection, and I loved how she gives me loving touches, kisses, and hugs. We loved sharing our feelings with each other and enjoyed each other immensely. Having twins can be intense and stressful, but I loved being with them as much as possible. The twins made things a little stressful for Kim, but I was happy to pick up any slack and help out. We made a great partnership and always worked things out before either of us got upset. With Kim and my twin girls, life could not be any better. The Trade Show A week before the annual trade show, Kim was notified that they needed her to attend this three-day event. Due to others out sick with the virus, they had to assign Kim to the show. Of course, she tried to get out of it, but they were in desperate need, and she had no choice. Baby I'm so sorry about this. I hate leaving you and the girls for three days. I called my boss twice and tried to get out of it, but he said he needed all of us at this event. You know how much I hate being away. I watched her pack for her trip and assured her that we would be okay for a few days, and that we would miss her, but we were there to support her. I helped her with her luggage and brought it out for the limo the company hired for the ride to the airport. As I said before, we had the perfect marriage and trusted her completely. I never saw her flirt or act anyway, except as the perfect loving wife. We had a fully transparent marriage and told each other everything. We shared our love for our children and did everything together. Which is why the text I received from my colleague and friend was difficult to believe in process. It was the second night of the trade show when I got a message from my colleague Greg, who was at a cybersecurity event in Atlanta. David, how's your weekend going buddy? I'm enjoying my girls. Kim is at a trade show, and I'm here spending some quality time with my favorite girls. Aren't you at the security convention this weekend? I am. You said Kim is at a trade show, right? Do you know which one? Well yes, she's in Atlanta this week, but I'm not sure about the name of the trade show. Her company is showing their products at the convention center. Why? I'm at dinner with my group and well, are you sitting down? I am. What are you trying to tell me Greg? Two photos and a video came over my text, and I sat there frozen in fear. The first photo was of my wife in an outfit I've never seen before. It was the shortest dress I've ever seen. Low cut, showing her massive breads. Duck me pumps, which I didn't even know she ever wore. Her hair and makeup were over the top, she looks stunning. In fact, I've never seen her look so sexy in my life. When I saw the first photo, I was convinced it was a look-alike, someone that looked like Kim, but there was no way it was her. I laughed to myself thinking, I wish Kim would dress like that sometime, but that's not my wife. I stopped laughing when the next photo arrived, which was a close-up of her sitting very close in kissy face, next to Jonathan, one of her supervisors that she worked with. I sat there in shock, not moving and didn't even blink until the next photo came in. This one was another close-up of her smiling and staring into Jonathan's eyes. My heart stopped when I saw that one, but tried to convince myself that there was a good explanation until the next text came in a few minutes later. This was a short video of my wife kissing Jonathan with her arms around his neck and his hand on her right bread. That's when my head exploded. I felt my entire world crashing on top of me at that moment. 
Tears of pain started rolling down my face, my heart was racing, and I felt sick. The text came in. Dude, you okay? What should I do? Can you see her right now? Yes. I'm going to call her right now and just check in with her. I hit her number and listened as the phone rang a few times and went to voicemail. I left a message, telling her that we miss her, and just wanted to check in to make sure she was having a good night. I called Greg. I just called her, what did she do? David, I'm so sorry about this. She took the phone out of her purse, looked at the caller ID, and then put it back in the purse. Man, I can't believe that's her, I mean I've never seen her act, or dress like that. David, I never realized how hot your wife was. Sorry man, I didn't mean that. It's okay Greg, thanks for sharing this with me and not hiding it from me. You're a good friend. I'll figure things out and you don't need to get involved. Don't let her see you, if possible. Let me know if anything else happens but don't spend any more time spying on her. I'll take it from here, my friend. Are you going to be okay? No, I'm far from that, but I know what I have to do, and I'll take care of it. I'm still in shock and this will take me some time to understand everything, but you know I will. Thanks again. You're welcome. I love you, man. I'm here for you. Take care Greg. Thanks again. I poured myself a stiff drink and sat down in the dark living room, trying to understand how my world crashed in less than 20 minutes. I never had a clue that there was a problem in our relationship. How long has this been going on? Have I really been that obtuse and didn't recognize the signs? No. She never gave me a reason to think that way. In fact, over the last six months she has been even more loving than ever. Our sex life had doubled in intensity, and our relationship has gotten stronger. This made no sense, and I could not comprehend any of this. Over the next hour Greg sent a few more photos and videos. There was a short video of them dancing with his hand on her bum, another short video of them kissing on the dance floor, and one more photo of them in a deep kiss alone on the deserted dance floor. I realized they must have been kissing so deeply that they didn't realize the music had stopped. I knew it was over between us, but there was so much more I needed to know and understand. Being an engineer and a problem solver, I fell into my analytical mode and over the next few days tried to come up with a plan. Surprisingly, I got a call from Kim at 10pm, after the last photo of them came in. I took a deep breath and tried to regain my composure. I was not going to give anything away or let her know I had any idea of what she was doing. Hi honey, I'm sorry I missed your call before. I was in a meeting at dinner and couldn't speak. I miss you so much baby, and I wish I was there with you under the covers kissing you all over. I miss you too Kim. I love you so much and thanks for calling. The girls are so cute, and I'll send you some photos. They miss their mom and want you to come home. I tried to leave tomorrow, but my boss told me I needed to stay here, I hate being away from you darling. We'll celebrate when you get home. Are you done for the night? Yes, I'm getting ready for bed and another long day at work. I love you baby and I'll call you tomorrow. Good night Kim, I love you more than you'll ever know, and I hung up the phone as my tears started flowing again. What I said was true. I loved her more than life itself and wanted this to be a bad dream. It was now after midnight as I lay in bed not being able to sleep. I wondered if she was really in her hotel room and what she was doing. My question was answered when I got another text from Greg. It was a photo of my wife Kim and Jonathan on a couch in what looked like the hotel lobby. It was a photo of them kissing with his hand all the way up her short skirt and her arms around his neck. They looked like two newlyweds, sharing their love in public, as it were. Last one buddy, I'm done for the night, but it looks like she's going to be busy. Let me know if you want me to stop this, I can break it up easily enough right now. This is hard to see but thank you for these photos. No, let her go, this is all on her, and you don't need to get involved. Let it go. Thanks again. I cried myself to sleep knowing that the love of my life had betrayed me, our marriage vows, and our girls. Sleep finally took away the pain and tears until I woke up the next morning. There were several loving texts from Kim with hearts, kisses, and smiley faces. She professed her love and said how much she missed me and the girls. She told me to get ready for a wild night of sex when she returned. She was acting so sweet and loving as if nothing happened, and I began to wonder if maybe she had dissociative disorder and didn't know what she was doing. Maybe she was drugged. I was searching for answers, but I realized I had to face the facts and plan ahead. She would be home in a few days, and I had to come to grips with all of this. We spoke several times a day and everything was normal. She continued to tell me how much she missed all of us and wanted to get home. I wasn't sure what angered me more. Was it the cheating and being with another man, or was it her deceit and lying? She was playing me for the fool, and that was equally as painful as seeing her kissing Jonathan. 
After Greg's text and the revelation of my wife making me her cuckold, I went into action. As I was a technical guru in the family, I had added some software to her phone that allowed me to find the phone if it was ever lost. Of course, I got the new software on the market and installed it, and even explained how to use it to Kim. This software package also included a voice, text, and email recorder with auto-uploads to the cloud if activated. Let me be clear. I did not put this software on the phone to spy on her, but as it turns out, it was going to be useful. Before last night, I would never have thought of looking at any of her personal things, but after last night my trust would never be the same. I had to protect the girls and save our marriage if possible. Fortunately, the girls kept me busy and my mind off my crashing marriage. Making breakfast, cleaning them up, and playing dolls with them was something I loved and cherished. I'm not sure if you ever had to take care of twin three-year-olds, but let me tell you, it is a serious workout. It was 2pm, and I finally got the girls down for a nap after lunch. I took a shower and cleaned up the house before I sat down to catch up on things. Kim sent me six more loving texts, and said she would call at 5pm after they quit for the day. After reading them I accessed the cloud from my laptop, logged into her account, and reviewed everything that got uploaded since I activated the recording spyware. I sat there in shock as I read the messages being sent to Jonathan. Here are a few. You were amazing last night baby. I can't wait to get you inside of me again tonight. Thanks kitten, I love ducking your sweet kitty. Can we go back to my room after we finish before dinner? Absolutely, but I need to call my hubby before we leave. I should be ready by 5.15. Does hubby have any clue about us? Of course not. He knows I love him, and I'll make sure he continues to know that. What we do is something he never needs to know about. We kept it a secret for over six months, and he has no clue. I know how to handle him, don't worry. I had to stop reading as my anger was becoming overwhelming. Kitten. He called her kitten. That was what I called her when we had sex and made love. Had she given that to him as well? Was I really this stupid and didn't have a clue? What kind of a chump was I? After I compassed myself, I opened other files and almost fell off my chair. Jonathan sent her a stick picture which disgusted me. I was forced to look at his very large clock in full color, and knew that he had sent this to my wife. How disrespectful was this asshole? What I saw next made me cry out in anger. The next image I opened was from Kim, and it was a close-up of her now shaved kitty, with a note. Come lick me baby. A shaved kitty? When did she do that? She never even turned it for me, and now she shaved it for him. She's sending him kitty photos with come with me text. I dropped the laptop on the chair, stood up and screamed. I picked up the lamp from the table and threw it hard into the wall, shattering it into a thousand pieces. The anger I had learned to control had now taken over. I was about to break the other lamp when I heard the girls crying. The crying shocked me back into the moment, and I immediately regained control. I went into the bedroom and held both girls until they stopped crying and settled down. I let them play in the living room as I sat on the chair with another stiff drink, after cleaning up all the glass from my outburst. In my mind the marriage was over, and it was time to act. I didn't have the willpower to listen to any more of their conversations, or look at any other of the uploaded files, and I just let them accumulate on the cloud. I decided the best plan of action was to play along with Kim, just like she was playing me. I was going to act like a loving husband as I formulated my plan of action. My immediate plan was to contact a divorce lawyer, a private investigator, and come up with a way to keep custody of the girls. The girls were my main concern and the only thing that mattered to me in this world. 5pm phone call. Hi baby. How are the girls? They miss their mommy. Oh, my goodness, they're all I think about all day long and you are of course. I can't wait to hold you in my arm when I get home. I'm going to give you the warmest kiss you've ever received. I played along, oh baby, I think about you all day, and can't wait to hold my loving, sexy wife. Soon baby, we'll be together again. Somehow, I kept it together and the call lasted for exactly 15 minutes. At 5.15 she ended the call and said, I love you David. I need to go now, the bus back to the hotel is leaving and I need to leave. I'll text you later. I love you. Another easily told lie. She was definitely good at that. I love you too baby. More than you'll ever know. The pain from her lying and cheating was now replaced by contempt, anger, and revenge. I was going to destroy this woman and make her pay for her lying and deceit. I truly love this woman with all my heart, and this was the most difficult thing I've ever had to do. Returning home. I picked her up at the airport, and she threw her arms around me and gave me that kiss she had promised. She was either the best actress or really did love me that much. Was she just using Jonathan for sex? I continued to be confused by her antics. 
she spent an hour with the girls and loved being with them. That night in bed she was overly loving and repeatedly told me how much she missed me and the girls and hated being away from us for so long. She said all she thought about was being with me like this, now in bed holding each other. She was tender, loving, and completely different than the woman that was at the convention. I too was loving and actually enjoyed being with her this way. It was pleasing and I wished it could be real, because being with her like this was how I wanted to spend my life, but I knew this was all going to end shortly. I never let her know what I had learned, and I gave her my love and satisfied her every night. Anyone seeing us would think we had the most amazing relationship and would be jealous of our love for each other. This continued for three months, and I tried to watch for any signs of an affair, but there was nothing to point to. She was home every night from work at the same time, no unusual phone calls or text messages. I even thought that maybe all this was a mistake and everything would work out. I got a call from Mr. Bryce, the private investigator, and scheduled a meeting for the following afternoon. I drove downtown to their office and was seated in their conference room. Good afternoon David, good to see you again. Good to see you Mr. Bryce. David, I wish I had nothing to report, and I wish I could tell you that you were wrong, but unfortunately I have bad news. Are you ready to see our discovery? I sighed and said yes. I was hoping for the best, but also knew what was going on between Kim and Jonathan. Mr. Bryce took out a thick three-ring leather binder and placed it in front of me. There were several sections with tabs marked text messages, voice transcripts, video links, phone call transcripts, and photos. Mr. Bryce, before we open this, I am very confused because over the last three months I have been attentive to her movements and schedule, and there is not one thing out of the ordinary. She has been the perfect wife and lover, and nothing makes sense. Well, let me lead you through this and see if things become clear. I had stopped looking at the cloud files, as my heart could not handle the correspondence and prayed for the best. Of course, that was not going to happen. There were over 75 pages of text messages, 25 pages of emails, 75 pages of photos including them together entering and exiting hotel rooms all time stamped. There were over 82 video links and 50 pages of phone conversations. Kim and Jonathan visited this motel at least 4 times a week over the last 3 months. You can see photos of them each day at 1pm. They spent an average of 2 hours together at each visit. During the last month, it appears that there were 2 men that visited your wife 4 times a week. Do you recognize this person? Oh my god, that Jason Sinclair, he's the CEO of her company. Are you telling me she's ducking two guys and one of them is the CEO? Sorry to have to tell you this, but from the text messages, phone calls, and videos, he is clearly sexually involved with your wife. The video link marked balcony did capture him making love to your wife as she was bent over the railing. I guess they felt they were untouchable and didn't realize they were being filmed. Our 8K video was able to get close up of their faces, and our audio captured them as well. He played the video on the 80 display. There was Kim, my wife, leaning over the railing with her CEO behind her, ducking her hard. I watched as I saw the face she makes when she came, and then a close up of Jason's face with a cocky smile, as he enjoyed what it belonged to only me. I felt myself throw up in my mouth. I had to leave the room for a few minutes to regain my composure. I came back into the conference room and made them continue, as I now wanted to see what she's been up to. The video marked Balcony 2 shows your wife doing it with both Jason and Jonathan. I'm so sorry to have to show all of this. But since they were out in public, you can use these videos if you decide to proceed with divorce and a custody fight. He played the video of my loving wife be split roasted by her boss and CEO. I sat there with my mouth open, amazed. The same woman that would never take my clock in her mouth was being split roasted and swallowing their load. I still found it hard to believe this could be Kim and prayed for all of this to be one huge mistake. David, we looked into both Jonathan Wilkes and Jason Sinclair and found the following. Jonathan has been married with four young children for 10 years. Mr. Sinclair is also married for 25 years and had three adult children. It appears from the text messages that Jonathan brought Jason into the mix after your wife said she wanted to try a threesome. It gets pretty dark here, so I'll let you read when you're ready. Take the binder and this USB with all of the files and videos. I'm sure your attorney will need both. When I met my attorney, she was astounded by the amount of data we were able to gather and could not believe there were no signs of her adultery at home. She continues to put on the loving wife and mother act as if things were completely normal. The attorney said we had several actions that we can pursue from the files I delivered. She wanted time to work on all of our options and scheduled a meeting for the following week. I told her to start the paperwork for a divorce as soon as possible. I left the office with a large hole in my stomach. 
I knew it was over before I had these meetings, but seeing those videos had ended any hopes of reconciliation. Still confused, I asked myself, who was this woman? After the girls were in bed we sat on the couch and watched an old movie I picked out on Netflix called, Unfaithful. I heard this was a good movie, let's give it a chance, I said as I hit play. Since the movie was about cheating spouses, I planned the conversation. During the movie, I told Kim that there was a girl in my office that had been hitting on me for the last few months. Can you imagine me with another woman, I said laughing. She looked at me with squinted eyes, really, who? If I catch you even thinking about being with her, I'll cut your balls off. Do you understand? You belong to me, nobody else, she said with a serious expression. Even though I tried to keep it jovial, she was not fooling around. She made it clear that she would not tolerate any cheating. I could not believe how indignant she got over this. How hypocritical could one person be? She got angry over this, while she is ducking two men every day behind my back. Unreal. That pisses me off David. Why didn't you tell me about her before? What's her name? Kim, relax. She's an intern, a young girl that likes to flirt. I ignore her completely. What about you Kim? You're the best looking girl in your office. Are you telling me nobody flirts with you? Of course not. They all know I'm married and that I would never cheat on you. So, in our entire marriage, you've never thought about being with another guy or doing anything. I mean even a friendly kiss. You've never cheated on me baby. Now she was really pissed. Are you kidding me? Did you really just ask me that? I constantly tell you how much I love you, I'm always with you, and I could never think of being with another man. You're an arse. I can't believe you asked me that. I apologized and I agreed with her and continued to watch the movie. I smiled to myself as I thought that she should have been an actress, because she was so convincing that I even doubted myself. No wonder she was so good at her job, I thought. After things got a little calmer, she snuggled back into my shoulder, and I felt the time was right. I picked up my phone and opened my text application, and selected the photo of Kim and Jonathan kissing on the dance floor with his hand on her bum. I was looking at it when she noticed my distraction. What are you doing David? Why aren't you watching the movie? Because what I'm looking at is more realistic. What are you talking about? I muted the movie and showed her the photo. She froze and tried to say something, but nothing came out. I sat there still looking at the photo and said, Wow, that sure is one sexy kiss you're giving Jonathan. I can explain. Where did you get that photo? When you were at dinner with your boyfriend, Greg Stanton, was at the same restaurant and saw you with that guy. He texted me to see if that was really you, or a perfect lookalike. Well, it was you and he sent this over. Moreover, I have to say, you look so sexy in that dress. I've never seen you in a dress so short of revealing. I guess you wanted to impress your boyfriend. Oh, you were going to explain this. I can't wait to hear this, I said, putting the phone back on my lap. Baby, we had one dance and he had been drinking. When the song ended, he grabbed me and gave me that kiss. What you don't see is right after that I slapped him and made quite a scene. I would never let that happen. I did buy that dress for the business dinner, but I didn't realize how revealing it was until now. I'm so sorry. Oh, I get it, that can happen. And that was the only time that happened. I could tell she wasn't her usual confident self and said, yes baby, and he'll never do that again. The movie continued and I laid back and sat quietly knowing that Kim was anxious. After a few minutes, I took my phone and opened the video of them on the couch with his hand up her skirt and started watching. She looked at me with a scared look. What are you looking at now? Remember that night when you called me and said you had a long day, and you were back in your room and going to sleep? Yes, she whispered. It's funny, because I got another text from Greg two hours after your call, and this time it was a video. Want to see? I said hitting the play button and clearly showed her and Jonathan kissing with his hands, exploring her hidden treasures that were supposed to be for only me. I can't wait to hear this explanation, I said smiling. My anger was gone now, all I felt was contempt and amusement at her reactions. Oh my god. David. I'm so sorry. After we spoke on the phone Jonathan called and said we had to discuss an issue with one of the accounts that we were meeting in the morning. He asked me to come down to the lobby to prepare for the meeting. I can barely remember this video because I had several drinks and got a little drunk. You know what I'm like when I'm drunk. I know the video looks bad, but nothing happened after that. I do remember going up to my room. I told him to stop, and I was happily married and left. Nothing happened, you have to believe me. That's part of the problem kitten, I said emphasizing the name kitten. I saw her blink when I said that and continued. The problem is that I always believed you, but you've lied to me twice in the last 20 minutes about some serious sheet. Can you see this from my side? 
I'm alone by myself and the love of my wife is kissy face with her boss in two photos, wearing the sluttiest outfit she's ever worn. How do you think I feel, baby? David, I love you. That was three months ago, why didn't you say something sooner? To be honest, I wanted to see if you would tell me yourself. I wanted to see if my wife was honest and transparent as we've always been to each other. But now I understand how things are between us. Are you lying about anything else? Are you having an affair with him? Do you love him? I was playing with her now and enjoying her confusion and her acting. She started sobbing and continued telling me how much she loved me. Kim, please stop telling me that you love me so much. I'm sure you love me, and I still love you, but that has nothing to do with these photos. I need to understand why and if there is anything else you are lying about, I said as I pressed the voice recorder on the phone without her knowledge. David, listen to me. Nothing happened. Yes, I guess I kissed him like you saw, but that was it, and each time I told him to stop. I'm not sure what Greg Saar told you, but you have to believe me. Okay, stop crying baby. I believe you. I am confused on how you were dressed, however. I mean, you never wear anything like that for me, and you never do your hair and makeup like that either. Were you doing it for him? You didn't answer my question, do you love him? Do you want to leave me for him Kim? Please, I need to know the truth. The sobbing started up again, no David, I only love you. I never want to lose you. Nothing happened and I don't know why I dress like that, it's so unlike me. Maybe it was because all the other women dressed that way, I wanted to look as good. I don't know, I was a little insecure I guess. I guess I can understand that, and it makes sense. But why didn't you tell me about Jonathan and your intimacy? Since nothing really happened and I put a stop to it, I didn't want to get you upset. I mean, he's my boss and I couldn't afford to lose my job if anything happened. If anything did happen, I would have told you right away, you know that. I kissed her and held her gently, letting her cry herself out. This was just the beginning of a month-long episode of playing out my revenge. We made love that night and I enjoyed her amazing skills, detached as her husband, and thinking of myself as one of her sex partners. I wasn't going to deprive myself of her body, and alert her to anything out of the ordinary. I did question her on her shaved kitty and wondered how she would respond. This is new. Did you shave your kitty for your boyfriend? You never did that for me when I asked you before. No baby don't be silly. I did it tonight hoping to spice things up and show you that I'll do anything for you. I love you baby, I belong to you honey. Her acting was impressive, but at this point I didn't care anymore. She was more passionate than ever, trying to convince me I was her only love. That continued over the next several weeks, every night. Her acting skills were at full throttle, and I just enjoyed the show. The next morning, I did log into the cloud to see if she had any correspondence with Jonathan, and of course she didn't disappoint. Oh my god. Somebody took photos of us at the convention and sent them to David. His friend was at the restaurant and saw me without David. I'm not sure what he knows, but the video was of us kissing with your hand on my kitty, while we sat on the couch in the lobby. Holy shit. Now that you mention it, I remember some guy with a phone across from us watching, but I didn't think anything of it. What did David do? Nothing. I convinced him nothing had happened, and I stopped you. He has no clue that I spent the night in your room. I'll convince him it was the alcohol and make it up to him. He's easy to convince. A few kisses and my kitty are all I ever need to give him. Be careful babe. We're on for tomorrow, I'll meet you there at 1pm as usual. Can't wait to feel your big clock inside me. It's been too long. Love you, baby. Love you too, kitten. That was the last message and I sat there in silence thinking about all of this. Yes, apparently, I was the world's biggest idiot, but revenge is sweet, and I was going scorched earth. But I was taking my time in order to enjoy Kim's antics and see how many more lies she would tell. The first thing I did of course was to take care of the financial situation, moving funds, closing accounts, etc. I kept the main visa card open and lowered the limit to $2,500 in order to control any damage she might do. Since Kim had no idea how upset I was, she never thought I would make any changes. I confirmed with the attorney that since the house was mine, prior to the marriage, that I would not have to leave the home once she was served. Of course, I prepared a notorious email that I would eventually send out, including videos, text messages, and photos to all of her friends, family, and work associates. I also created duplicates of the three ring binders from my pie for Mrs. Sinclair and Mrs. Wilkes, to share my pain. I would send this at the same time as everyone was being served in cases filed. I had my attorney prepared to file public civil suits against both Jonathan, her boss, and Jason, the CEO of the company. Since the company was one of the largest tech companies on the East Coast, my attorney was thrilled at the CEO involvement. 
We were going to make them a settlement offer before we went public on how the CEO and managers sexually harassed their employees. We worked with child services attorneys for full custody of the children and prepared the paperwork, files, and binder from the investigation. Over the next few weeks, things seemed normal. We loved the kids and spent time together every day, just as normal. We went to dinner and discussed everything avoiding the large elephant in the room. I'm sure my silence about that was driving her crazy, not knowing what I was thinking had to be taxing. I decided to have some more fun with Kim and asked some questions. So Kim, has your boss made any moves on you since the convention? Is there anything you want to tell me? I knew from her conversations with Jonathan that they were still meeting at the hotel daily. I wasn't sure how she could hold it together and lie so easily. It was fun to watch her react, and I can now even tell when she was going to lie. She said calmly, no, nothing at all. It's odd because we both act as if nothing happened. Which is the truth, nothing really happened. He's been completely professional, and we rarely even talk because we are so busy with our projects. I just sat there with a cocky smile, still amazed how the mother of my children, and the love of my life, can just lie to me so easily. I ducked her hard that night, releasing the remainder of the anger that was still coursing through my body. That night I would not take no for an answer, and had her suck my clock and swallow my load. It didn't take long to get hard again, and 20 minutes later I ducked her kitty hard. I also took her bum that night and used her like the cheap lying slot she now was. I was daring her to refuse any of my desires and took full advantage of her that night. I had not kissed her kitty since she got back knowing how she ducks other men almost every day. My god, David. What's gotten into you, you're a wild man tonight. I've never seen you so rough and wild. I loved it. What a slot, I thought. I knew this would be the last time before the sheet hit the fan tomorrow, and I was going to take as much as I could from my soon-to-be ex or wife. Early the next morning before I left for work, I knew my little girls were still asleep, I ducked Kim hard, one more time, and had her suck my clock for the second time in our entire marriage, before I left for the day. This time I shot my load all over her face and brutally rubbed into her hair, and then smeared it over her mouth and nose. I saw the look of shock on her face, before I turned and left her on her knees, like the slot she was. The anger still raged deep within me, and my thoughts continued to be dark and intense. Paper served. That afternoon the sheriff walked into the office of Tricom International and demanded to see Mr. Sinclair. Moments later Sheriff Clark entered Jason's office and handed him an envelope, Mr. Sinclair, you've been served. A second later he was alone in his large office holding the envelope as fear enveloped his entire body. After he read the complaint for the third time, he immediately told his secretary to have Jonathan come to his office. While his secretary was making the call, Jonathan had just been served his complaint by the same sheriff. He hurried over to Jason's office, and they both stood there shocked and confused. What the duck? How did this happen Jonathan? If my wife finds out about this, I'll be ruined. This is your fault. You told me this slot would never give us up. You fix this Jonathan, or I swear I'll have you and your family destroyed. Do you understand? Jason Sinclair was a man you didn't duck with. A ruthless streetwise man that fought his way to the top of this multi-billion dollar organization and wasn't going to give it up for this slot. He would have Jonathan's balls in a jar if he didn't get this fix. Jonathan ran out of his office and waited for the elevator to go down to the 12th floor and talk with Kim. As he was walking down the hallway towards Kim's office, he saw the sheriff coming the opposite way and realized he was coming from Kim's direction. He ran into her office to find her sitting at her desk with tears rolling down her face. She was crying uncontrollably and unable to speak. David had just crashed her world, just as she had destroyed his a few months ago. It took over an hour for her to calm down enough to be able to talk, and even then, she could hardly put a sentence together. Kim, what the duck happened? How did he find out about all of us? What do you mean? I just got served divorce papers, what do you mean us? Sinclair and I have also been served and are in a civil lawsuit for what has happened. We don't know what evidence he has, but it must have been something more than those two images you saw. You need to have David back off or Sinclair will ruin us and my family. Oh my god, this is bad. This is horrible. Go to him, make him understand, do whatever you need to do to stop this. Go home and figure this out. Call me tonight if you can and let me know what's happening. Kim packed up and was still shaking as she drove home. The man she loved, her husband and father of her children, was going to divorce her. She didn't want a divorce and she really did love David, but somehow, she found the sexual excitement something she needed and couldn't stop. She had to have David understand, she couldn't lose him over this. She got home to an empty house, the girls were at David's sister's house as they are every afternoon while they both worked. 
She called David's sister and asked if she could keep the kids overnight. She didn't ask why, but of course Kathy was happy to have the girls for the night. Kim showered, fixed her hair and makeup, and waited for David to come back from work. At 6 o'clock she heard the garage door and nervously waited for him to come into the house. Hi Kim, I didn't expect to see you tonight. I assumed you would be with Jonathan. Oh wait, he's married and has children, I guess that might be awkward. David, please let's talk, she took his hand and had him sit next to her on the couch. She looked surprisingly put together and much nicer than she normally did for him. He expected this and continued to play the game. David, I got served today as you already know. But do you understand that I don't want a divorce? I need you and I love you, I won't sign those papers. Jonathan means nothing to me, yes, we had sex, but it wasn't love. I just needed it and I'm so sorry. I'll never do it again, I promise. Oh, you promise. I guess I can trust you now so yes, I'll just forget everything, and we can go back to normal, I said with a loving smile. Kim grabbed him and kissed him, thank you baby. I love you so much. I'm glad you forgive me and understand. I'll never lie to you again. That was a surprise. I was sure she knew I was being sarcastic. I recoiled and pushed her away. Are you ducking mad, woman? I could never trust you again. After all your lying and deceit, there is nothing left. I gave you so many chances, but you continue to lie and duck around on me and ruin our lives. I know everything, your daily lunch meetings at the hotel with your bosses. Did you really think I would take you back after what you've been doing? Have you even thought about the damage you're doing to the girls? There's no way I can overlook this. But you have to. And why are you going after Sinclair and Jonathan? Well, your duck buddies are also your supervisor and CEO of a multi-billion dollar company. After I dump your ass, I'll need money in order to support the girls properly, and seeing as how they are partly responsible for destroying our marriage and my life, I am going to bring them down as well. I'll intend to ruin their family, financially hurt them, and duck them like they ducked you. Kim had never heard David talk this way, and she's never seen him so angry and focused. The seriousness of the situation finally hit her, and she realized that she no longer had control of the situation or her husband. All she could do now was beg. So, with tears running down her face and on her knees, she held David's legs and begged for forgiveness. David did feel sorry for her, but his rage overcame this weakness, and he lifted her to the couch. In a soothing voice David spoke to Kim as if she was a child, listen to me Kim. You need to pack a bag and go to your mom's house for a few nights. Get an attorney and then we can set up a meeting to discuss things. In the meantime, a word to the wise, I suggest you stay clear of Jason and Jonathan. Things are about to get horrid. Later that night, at her mom's house, she explained that David and her had a small argument and needed to stay with her for a few days. At 11pm, that same evening, she called Jonathan's cell. Jonathan told her to hold on and quickly linked Jason into a three-way call. Jason are you there? Kim you there? Yes, yes, we're here. Sinclair started the conversation, so Kim, did you get him to back off on the lawsuits and the divorce? No, in fact he kicked me out and warned me to watch out because it's going to get ugly. Sinclair screamed into the phone, Jesus Christ Jonathan, what have you done? Kim, you ducking slut. I swear I will have you and Jonathan ended if my family finds out about this. I don't care what you do but make this go away. Kim was crying, there's nothing I can do, he's out of control and won't listen to anything I say. He's not even taking my calls or answering my texts. Sinclair spoke, Jonathan, you need to fix this. Set up a meeting with David, have him meet us somewhere, a bar, loud and the noisier the better. Kim, you will be there as well, and you will ask him to back off the lawsuit in front of us. If he says no, then Jonathan and I will explain how unhealthy it would be for him and his family if he doesn't back off. I have people on retainer to fix things like this, and I won't hesitate to use them to save this from becoming a complete sheet show. Jonathan, you understand what you need to do? Yes Mr. Sinclair. Kim, you know what you have to do, right? Yes Mr. Sinclair. Get it done and make it happen tomorrow afternoon. We don't have any time to waste. Get a meeting tomorrow. Sinclair was gone. Kim and Jonathan hung up a few minutes later contemplating the situation. That night when David listened to the call, he wasn't surprised by their desperation and put his own plan together. As expected, the next morning Jonathan called David and requested a meeting to discuss a settlement. He said to meet him at the yard house, at 6pm that evening. David agreed and was at his private investigator's office at 4pm, getting wired up for the meeting with Jonathan. They were using the latest technology with noise cancelling technology, to focus on voice frequency to get clear audio, even in a noisy setting. The Pi would also be there to film the meeting as backup to the event. 
David walked in at 6.15, intentionally making them wait for him, and some added time for the Pi to set up his video camera location. David saw Kim and walked over to the group, Kim, I'm surprised to see you here with your boyfriends, but I guess we know where your alliance lies. Gentlemen, what can I do for you? Why are we here? Sinclair spoke up, David, I'm Jason Sinclair, and I requested this meeting. Sinclair, you look so much different in person. Those videos don't do you justice. I can't say it's nice to meet you. Yes, that's the reason we're here. This is Jonathan Wilkes. Jonathan, the man that's been ducking my slot wife and ruining my marriage. I can't say it's nice to meet either of you. Sinclair spoke, I don't blame you for your anger. Believe me, if I were you, I don't know what I would do but that being said, we need to discuss things. Go ahead, what do you have in mind? David said. We want you to drop the lawsuits you brought against myself, Jonathan, and the company. Ha. Huh. Is that all? Well, no. Sorry, I can't do that. Somebody has to pay for taking away the most important thing in my life. Looking at him he added, the only woman I ever loved, and the mother of my children. I can't imagine life without her. Kim started crying when she realized how she destroyed the most important things in her life. What will it take for you to stop all of this and take him back? Name your price. First of all, there is no amount of money in the world that you could offer me to take her back. She betrayed my love, my trust, and our children's lives for a duck fest with you two idiots. That's never going to happen. I will drop the civil and corporate cases under two conditions. Number one. I want a $5 million settlement. Number two. I want a meeting with both your wives and Kim and a full confession of what you've done. If you agree to these two stipulations, I'll drop the cases. Ducky David. I'll give $100,000, and you'll need to sign an agreement to never discuss this with anyone. Sinclair leaned in and spoke quietly, I can't expose my family to any of this, and if they find out, David, I will kill you. Kim told us your entire daily routine, and it would be a simple thing to make you disappear. So, let's try again. He was shocked when David smiled and took a sip of his drink. Well, I can lower the amount to 4 million, but your families need to know what you've done. Sinclair was gobsmacked, David, you're writing your own sentence here. Think it through. Drop the charges and take him back. It was only an affair, we can get past this. David took out his phone and sent two texts, opened his email, and sent the email he had set up. All the videos and images, texts, and messages were now on the way to all of Kim's friends, family, work associates. The two text messages David sent were for the couriers that were sitting in front of Jason and Jonathan's house, waiting for their instructions. The message said, deliver the package, and a few minutes later Mrs. Sinclair and Mrs. Wilkes now had duplicates of the three ring binder with all the photos, videos, messages, phone calls, and evidence of their affair. David made sure the cover of the Sinclair binder was a screenshot of Jason ducking Kim over the railing with that sick smile on his face. For Mrs. Wilkes, he arranged a screenshot of Kim taking Jason from behind with Jonathan's clock in her mouth. It did make for an impactful and exciting cover photo. Sinclair was getting angry and yelled at David's lack of attention. What the duck hunter, I'm talking to you. What do you say? Will you drop the charges? My answer to you Jason, Jonathan, and my whore wife is go to hell. Just then both Jason and Jonathan's phone started ringing. Both of their wives were on the phone. I saw Sinclair's face turn red and look at me with evil eyes. I saw Jonathan in shock and actually saw tears forming in his eyes. Kim looked at me and asked what was happening. I answered, check your email in a few minutes, and I think you'll understand. Sinclair hung up with his wife and stuck his finger into my chest and screamed, you're a dead man, Hunter. I'm going to have your throat slit and watch you die like a dog. He turned and walked out of the bar. Jonathan looked at me and just said, why? Why did you do this to me? I was amazed that he would ask something so stupid, really. You've been ducking my wife, the love of my life, and mother of my twin girls, every day, for the last six months, and set her up with Sinclair for three-way duck, and you're surprised that someone might strike back. Everything I send your lovely wife was for her benefit. For her to know what a degenerate predator you are, and how you've ruined so many lives. Kim's phone started ringing as she got calls from her sister, brother, aunt, just in a few minutes. They now had all seen the video and photos and had a lot of questions. She said she didn't know what they were talking about, and then opened her email to see what I had sent. Her mouth dropped and she looked at me in anger. You bustard, how can you have done that to me? You made it all too easy, babe. I do love you, but we're done. And after I give this audio recording from this meeting over to the police and social services, my attorney is pretty convinced that I'll have full custody of the girls, and you will be lucky if you stay out of jail. 
Sorry kitten, yes kitten, my pet name for you that you shared with your duck buddy. I know it all princess, and you now need to pay for all of your actions. Six months later. In order to stay out of the public domain, Tricom settled the lawsuit with a $2.25 million payout to David Hunter. Jason Sinclair was removed as CEO and fired without severance for violating the morality clause in his contract. He lost over $10 million in stock options and a $5 million severance agreement, all because of his desire to duck my wife. Sinclair is also serving a five-year sentence for conspiracy to commit murder, along with several other charges, after they investigated his business dealings. Sinclair's wife divorced him while he was in jail and crucified him financially. He will come out of jail broke, with no family, and no place to live. The news made David feel a little better, and he even smiled for the first time in months. Mrs. Wilkes also divorced Jonathan leaving him no money, no place to live, child support, and half his income is alimony. He was penalized with a $1 million award from the civil trial for his part in the conspiracy, adultery, and his part in the loss of affection from David and Kim's marriage. He lost his job and was now working as a day laborer. David was still basking in his revenge when he got word of Jonathan's fate. He had to declare bankruptcy and started living under an overpass near the day workers pick up location. This also gave David some pleasure, and he again found himself smiling more often. Kim was sentenced to five years, but with help from David, the sentence was reduced to one year house arrest, and four years as probation for conspiracy. She lost her fight for the kids, and David now has full custody. Because of the evidence and the crime, she did not do well in the divorce. The home belonged to David, so she had no place to live. She had earned as much as David before she was fired, so there was no alimony or child support. Kim fell into a deep depression and now lives in her mother's basement. The family has turned their back on Kim for what she had done, which caused her to lose her visitation rights to her children. The email I sent with the video and photos attached, revealed a dark side of Kim that nobody recognized. It had the desired effect and completely destroyed Kim's family support net. Nobody can seem to forgive Kim, including Kim herself. She is on medication because of the three attempts to end her own life. She has been in and out of psychiatric hospitals over the last six months, and can't forgive herself for all the lives she held her in. David now spends all of his time with the girls. Not having to work after the settlements allows him to devote his life to his children. The children haven't seen their mother since the attempts, but have a strong support group from David's sister and mother. The girls will be fine and not have any lasting impacts from this traumatic episode. Revenge was sweet, but revenge would never fully heal David's wounds. He still loved Kim and forgave her but would never forget. The girls kept him busy which prevented the loneliness from overtaking him. Because of the betrayal, lies, and deceit, it would be years before David would love and trust again. It's amazing how little things can have a wide-reaching impact on so many people. Be careful out there.